Hey, it's Kim and I'm back with another video today all about journaling. I literally just wrapped the last video where I was talking about um, the things that I've learned about myself after I've been journaling for a year and I thought that it would be important to emphasize the tips and the things that I use to stay consistent with journaling. Of course, once you've discovered that this is so helpful and so enlightening for you, how do you stay consistent? Because life gets in the way, trust me, life gets in the way and time frames and timetables get all mixed up and maybe you'll find it hard at some point to continue on your journaling journey. So I want to provide my top tips or the top tips I have used over the last year in an effort to remain consistent with this journaling process. And I guess maybe this goes without saying, but I should create a journaling playlist that I'm going to have linked right up here for you. This is my third on the topic. Um, may not be my last. I don't know. But I'm going to create a playlist if you're interested in going back and seeing all of that from the beginning. But today we're talking about how to remain consistent with journaling. And I have a few tips that worked especially well for me. The first one is to actually make it a habit. I know that some people aren't fans of habit trackers. Um, some people, once they see things laid out that they have to check out, check off or mark every single day, they completely abandon it. I feel the same way <laughs> as it relates to certain things, but not necessarily habit trackers. Normally I, I'll use habit trackers to encourage something that I'm already interested in doing. I can't use a habit tracker to start something completely new. It's just not going to work for me. Not going to work at all. But through this year of journaling daily or journaling mostly daily, I've come to understand that if there are times where let's say I needed a break and I took a break for about a week and then I noticed, or maybe I was on vacation or I just needed a mental break. And then I noticed getting back into the habit of the daily journaling was a little bit challenging or a little bit tough for me. I would set up a daily habit tracker. So that maybe for every single day for the next week, I'm going to mark off on my weekly layout and my planner, which days I actually journaled. And that for me does help extremely well in encouraging that habit or kind of reawakening the habit of journaling for me. So maybe it's something you can try, something you can do to make it more of a daily habit for you. And if you're not the type of person who's into using a habit tracker on a piece of paper and a planner, um, of course you can always tie it to other things that you have in your routine. And this goes back to the science of creating habits, but let's say you have a morning routine where you make your coffee, read your Bible, pray, and then you get to work, right? So maybe in that same morning routine, your routine now becomes make your coffee, read your Bible, pray, journal, and then get to work. So you kind of wrap it into habits that are already established or routines that are just already a part of what you are always going to do on a daily basis. So that's another helpful tip for how to make this journaling thing an actual habit. The same could be said for an evening routine. So if you prefer to journal at night, maybe you brush your teeth and you floss, <laughs> and then you scroll on Instagram for about 20 minutes, and then maybe you read a couple of chapters in your book, and then you journal, and then you go to bed. I don't know, I just made that up, but you can kind of wrap it into that routine as well so that you're reinforcing this habit and you're tying it to other things that you are definitely going to always be doing. The next thing I would suggest is to make it fun, make it attractive, make it something that speaks to you, something that calls to you, something that you actually want to do. For me, that involves using pretty pens and pretty inks and nice paper. <laughs> it's very superficial, very straightforward, but I have to make it pretty, I have to make it attractive in order to like it. I also have taken to um, setting up the habit of decorating my journal pages beforehand. And this decorating, um, it's not very extensive. Uh, it used to be, or sometimes it might be, and then other times I'm just using a few leftover stickers that I might have for my Sterling Ink sticker kit. And I'm just, you know, using that to add a bit of deco to each page 
before I even get started. Not only does it help set up a framework for my journaling pages, but it keeps me interested in seeing, well, what's next? Like what's gonna be on the next journal spread? Or um, it keeps me interested in making the journal a creative outlet that I want to come back to over and over again. So I encourage you to make it fun and make it creative. Make it attractive for you. My next two tips, which are, I feel like, almost the most important, um, would be, the first one, is to make it easy. Make it easy. No one wants this journaling um, habit or this journaling journey. There's a word that I'm looking for this journaling process, I don't know. Nobody wants it to be hard. Like it shouldn't be hard. It shouldn't be something that you find um, you are loathing every time you think about journaling. If it gets to that point, cut it out. Just don't do it. Don't bother. Don't stress yourself out, but make it easy. So it has to be something that's easily accessible for you. Like I said, if you would prefer to um, use a, a computer or something to write out your, your journal entries, um, then it will be on your laptop that you're accessing multiple times a day. If you're not on a laptop multiple times a day, why would you be journaling? Why would you choose to journal on your laptop if you only take it out once a week? You know, so make it easy. Tie it to things that are normal parts of your daily life so that it's easily accessible for you whenever you want it, whenever you feel like you need it. And another tip that I found for making it easy might be for you to use journaling prompts. So sometimes when you don't feel motivated and you have no clue what to write about and you don't wanna write about what happened in your day today, journaling prompts along, maybe they can be topical, so maybe they are along um, the same topic of gratitude or a topic of relationships or something of the sort. So you might have a group of journaling prompts and you'll read one that may be a question or maybe a statement that helps to evoke feelings within you. And that's what you'll use to journal, to, to just write out a few lines. It doesn't have to be a full page or anything. Just write out a few lines regarding that journaling prompt. So that is another, another tool to help make it easy for you. Easily accessible and it helps the journaling process to flow better for you. And that leads into the other tip that I said would be the most important, one of the most important, it has to fit your life. It's almost like saying make it easy, but it has to fit your life. It has to work for you. If it's something that you have to bend over backwards to do, if it's something that does not fit your lifestyle, then it's not for you. It's not something that you're going to stick with and be consistent with. So if you want to make sure that you're consistent on this journaling journey, you have to make it something that fits your lifestyle. So while some of us would love to wake up in the morning, listen to the birds chirping, drink our coffee and journal, we don't all have that kind of lifestyle. Maybe we need to get kids to preschool. Maybe we need, I don't know, to answer our boss's emails that he sends at like two o'clock in the morning. We need to hurry up and answer those. So your lifestyle just may not be conducive to journaling early in the morning. So don't force it. Don't try and make it work um, because you see that it works that way for other people. Make it fit your lifestyle. If it's better for you to journal in the afternoon, just journal in the afternoon. It doesn't have to be evening, doesn't have to be morning. It just has to be whenever works for you. So those are my four top tips for journaling consistently. And it all wraps up and rolls into make it work. <laughs> make it work for you. Do what speaks to you the most and do what will feed your soul and your mind the most. Do what works for you. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you have any tips you want to share on how you journal consistently or any ideas for how to make this more of a habit in other people's lives, I would love to hear it. So feel free to leave some comments down below. Thanks again for watching today's video and I'll see you in the next one.